What's up YouTube, this is Spinska here, and I'm going to welcome you to my very first Room Total War campaign playthrough video. Uh, now I have played Room Total War a bunch in the past, but it's been quite a while because I've been uh, missing one of the discs you need to install it. Uh, as embarrassing as it is to admit, it's probably been two or three years since I've played Rome, um, but I've just been enjoying the other games like Shogun, Empire, and uh, Medieval 2. But thanks to a Reddit user by the name of Wild Variety, uh, I'm able to enjoy this awesome, awesome game once again. And it is a really awesome game. And in case this is your, uh, your first experience or your first introduction to Rome Total War, just a little bit of a backstory. Uh, this game was released in 2004 by Creative Assembly, so the same guys behind all the Total War games. And it was originally distributed by Activision. Uh, it was released to just outstanding reviews. And that was pretty cool because it got a lot of people talking about the Total War games. Not just Rome, but yeah, all the Total War games in general. And it really, really, really increased the community. Um, and most of that is just in part due to the amount of innovations they made to the series. Uh, revamping a lot of stuff about the campaign map, the multiplayer adding naval battles. Well, I guess what you can call naval battles. Um, naval battles didn't really come around till Empire, but they do have a version of this game. So we'll go ahead and we'll move into the Imperial Campaign. The Imperial Campaign is centered around these three families. Uh, Carthage is here because I did play a few hours beforehand just to kind of knock the cobwebs off. Um, again, if this is your first time, as you start conquering uh, factions in the Imperial Campaign, they unlock here. Not all the factions in the game, but some of them. Um, but the, the main three main families associated with the Imperial Campaign are the Julii, the Brutii, and the Scipii. Uh, some of the more famous, more, more well-known names associated with these families, you can think of Lucius Brutus. He was one of the four, first praetors whenever Rome became a republic. Uh, Scipio Af Africanus is a famous general that defeated Hannibal at Carthage. And Julius Caesar was, uh, well, everybody knows who Julius Caesar is. And I'll just make a quick uh, disclaimer right here. I don't know a ton about Roman history. I know a little bit. I like to read about it. But uh, if I make any mistakes, if I trip up on anything, please feel free to make a comment, send a private message, or anything like that. I'll go ahead and make a, um, a quick edit, or uh, I'll, I'll make it a point to uh, correct my mistake in a future video. We're going to go ahead and we'll play this campaign on Hard Hard. Uh, the AI isn't as difficult as it is in some of the newer games, like uh, Fall of the Samurai or Shogun or even Empire. But um, yeah, we don't really want to go through here and then, you know, just end up with a crazy, insane battle record of like, you know, 101. That's not fun for anybody. That's not going to be fun to watch. We'll leave Manage All Settlements on. Because I want this to be, I like to be involved in my campaigns and I like to kind of live out the story and kind of be there in it. Uh, follow AI characters so we can see what that pesky AI is up to. Uh, no battle time limit because I like the battles to be organic and ultimately not feel like it's a race. Um, now that might seem like these videos are going to be long, but I'll kind of like cut around it and edit around it and I want to keep all these down to around. 20, 25 minutes, 30 minutes at the longest. We're going to do a long campaign. Um, just because by comparison, this short campaign is kind of useless. Um, as you can see, it says hold 15 provinces and outlast a faction. For Julii, it's Gaul. For Brutii, it's Macedon and the Greek states. For Scipii, Carthage and Numidia. Now, it's a little redundant because... As you're conquering 15 provinces, Carthage and Numidia is going to be a part of that. So you're going to hit those 15 really, really quick. And I'd like to make more than, say, 5 videos. So, yeah, let's take that off. And I want to play as Broody Eye because uh, the first ever Rome campaign I did, I'm 99.9% .9 sure it was a Broody Eye. And it's probably the family I know least about. So it'll probably encourage me to read up more about them. And, uh, yeah. 
if I'm going to do Roma one, I want to do them. And I'm also used to going uh, going into Africa and then heading northwest towards uh, Britannia. So, pretty I got to be fun. We'll head, we'll head east. We'll, uh, yeah. So we're going to roll with these settings and uh, I'll see you on the other side. We Brutii are the only true Romans. We saved Rome. We drove out the kings. We made the Republic. The family deserve respect for that. Respect and obedience. We know what is best for Rome. New lands, living space, territory, slaves. I know what must be done. The Greeks. They look down their perfume noses at all Romans, and they hate us. I'm going to give them a reason for hate. When I've crushed them, Roman steel, that's the answer. Roman steel in the booty eye fist. And the other great Roman families, the Scipii, trash. They have no respect for proper Roman ways. For us, the Julii prostitute themselves as if the people matter. Bah! We, Brutii, must lead Rome. Uh, first things first, the lame Senate missions. Uh... Periodically throughout the game, we're gonna get these Senate missions. Um, oh, just a second. That is the best song ever. I love that song. I think the name of it is Divinitus. So if you can go on YouTube and you search for the song Divinitus from the Roman Total War soundtrack, just uh, listen to it for about an hour. And you will. It doesn't really matter if you've had a bad day, if life's giving you crap. You will be at peace. I promise you. Anyways, back to this. Uh, take Apollonia. Yeah, the Senate's going to give us stuff to do. It's going to give us a little objectives. Um, they're quickly going to kind of interfere with our plans. So the way we're going to counteract that is they give us a time limit, 10 turns. We're going to wait till probably the very last turn or the last two turns before we actually do these Senate missions. Uh, so that way they're, they're just not flooding us with them. So take Apollonia, this is actually okay, because it's right here, right next to us, and we're going to want to take Apollonia anyways. Uh, if we just take a quick look at the campaign map, we start off with two provinces, uh, Tarentum and Croton. Uh, these two cities, uh, I think it's Tarentum, yeah, Tarentum's our, our capital. Um... We want these two cities to be kind of economic cities for the start. And we're going to actually start off building traders here. We'll check out how much trade they have. Uh, building browser, settlement details. Trade summary. So this one has a total income, 91 trade income. That kind of sucks. Average harvest. Again, not the greatest. And... See what Tarentum does. A thousand, eh, not the best, but kind of okay. We'll make roads after these traders are done building. But um, yeah, our our biggest priority for these is we're gonna kind of create an economy. And speaking of trade, we'll take our diplomat. Uh, we have this game gives you different agents. A diplomat, uh, he's mostly just used to negotiate with other factions. And he moves like the armies do, so we're going to send him kind of off to the northwest to mess with some of these kind of, um, the Gauls, Britain, mess with some of these tribes around here. Another agent we have is the Roman and a spy. The spies, we can put him in a town like Apollonia, and if we go siege it, he will open up the gates for us. The higher experienced spy, the greater chance of a siege, uh, excuse me, the greater chance he will open the gates for us. Go ahead and let him open the boat. Let's go ahead and take a look at our family tree. We see ahead of the household is Tiberius Brutus. 52 years old. We got a four-store general. He's uh, got five wreaths on influence. Not a great at managing. 
It's kind of a bummer. We got Ulus Brutus. Okay, this guy is not our faction heir. He's kind of a chump. One star, five wreaths. Five wreaths is nice. He's got good influence. Um, probably comparatively. Let's see, Amulius. He's a five star, three wreath, two management, two scroll. Ooh, Vivius. Vivius is pretty average. It's pretty well balanced compared to the other uh, the other two. I usually like to change up my faction errors because as you can see the game gives you kind of a not a good one. It's just whichever guy is the oldest really. I believe that's how it works. So we're actually going to change this to hmm Let's go with Vivius and hope that Vivius finds himself a wife and gets busy and has some, some sons. Alright, so let's go ahead and let's talk goals. Uh, short term, long term. Short term will just be what are we going to do in this episode. Long term is what are we going to do over about 10 episodes. So short term... We want to try and take a settlement along this coast. Um, Salona looks pretty good to me. We'll stick our spy in there. Oh, let's see. Got a militia hoplites. Some Sicilian pirates. Okay. And some mercenaries. Ready to sail. Wait, 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 time. We'll go ahead and consolidate our armies. Long-term goals, we want to take over uh, the Adriatic Sea right here and kind of control all the trade right here. And we'll try, once we accomplish that, we'll kind of reevaluate things and we'll kind of move, like I said, further eastward. But for right now, let's just worry about Salona. So we'll go ahead and take our armies. Like I said, we'll consolidate them. Grab these guys. I'll leave my generals here. Let's see, we got a yellow face right there. The faces represent happiness within the provinces, which probably means that my taxes are high. Our taxes are normal, probably. I like a low tax rate. It promotes growth. And we see population growth 4%. It also helps out with public order, even though you get a little less income. But that's okay. You'll make up the income on the back end. And we got a pretty decent army that we can go start trouble with. But that should be good for now. We'll go ahead and in turn. And that was too fast to see what the hell was going on. I shall speak with them at once. No more news. Ready to sail. Yes, Captain. So we're docked here. We'll take Amulius. And it was Amulius that I made. My air, right? No. Vivius. Vivius is going to be the better commander just because he has more stores. Set sail. Set sail. Guess I can't disembark just yet. We'll disembark over here. I doubt this place has any walls. Did I not disembark? I should have an agent here. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Yeah, we just have a governor's house. There's no walls here. Most of these Greek towns don't have walls. So. Let's go ahead. We got one more turn on the trader. Each town. I'm not going to recruit any soldiers. It's kind of unnecessary at the moment. This intern again. Suitable husband for Paulina. This guy, he's just been in wars. It's not really good enough. He doesn't really bring anything to the table, so we're going to go ahead and decline him. And a turn report. A little bit of a profit. See, trade isn't that great. We got no money from mining. All of our money is coming from farming and taxes. To keep that in mind. But our trading is done. So now that trading's done, we're going to go ahead and upgrade our roads. We 
got Carthage and the Greek cities declared war. It's kind of odd. Um, disembark and attack Salona. Okay, we got 1,600 men to their 600. We'll go ahead and fight this out. Today we make our own fates. The omens may say that we face disaster, but I choose to think differently. Can any true man do otherwise? Do not fear these rebel slaves. They are only slaves and will die as easily as cattle. These people have never fought us before. Let us shock them so much that they never wish to fight us again. Today, the carrion birds feast, but they will feast upon our enemies, not on good Roman flesh! Okay, sweet speech. We're going to go ahead and start the battle. I would like these, uh, what are they, Sicilian pirates? We'll go ahead and move to engage them. Take the skirmish mode off. Sloppy, but it's alright. I just gotta move all three of these groups up. No, we use uh, Bellates for support. Yeah, these guys just got creamed. How many is left? I can't get my house. Oh, I guess none's left. I couldn't get my cursor on it. I'm gonna take all my cavalry. Kind of position them on the side for a flank. Can't yeah, click utilities, don't want them. There has to be kind of reinforcements to the main group. No. This place does have uh, militia hoplites, which you gotta really watch out for militia hoplites because they just shred through infantry in a failing swarm. And I kind of had a speed bump there because these guys are green, so it's gonna be these Illyrian rebels are green, these Illyrian mercenaries. So it's gonna be one big green mess. That's great. Let's see, I'll put these guys in guard mode. Fire will run up the center. And I'll put a supporting group of these Valetes behind them. I think I have more move on this side. See what he does, he's kind of moving into position. They got Lanian mercenaries. Kind of moving out of these missiles, right? Yeah. You do not want to be facing that way, buddy. That's one thing that always was kind of a um, negative to Rome was the padding inside of cities. Not always the best. Two more units of Hastati. I'm gonna send my cavalry on the back. And we'll just sandwich him into the city street. Try and pull my uh, Hastati out since the uh, hoplite's kind of moved up. You can see how the pillar kind of coming through the top. It's pretty sweet. And here it 
Sounds like attack order. We'll put those guys to attack order. I need to get these Velotes out of there. The enemy oh. show their true virtue. They are not soldiers, only frightened rabbits running from our men. Everybody's routing. I guess. Seriously? I guess so. That was a lot easier than it should be. Get a few more kills. Enemy general falling. Yeah, that's enough of that. Captain Marops. Probably pronouncing that wrong. Will be amazed at such a victory. The day is ours. I love that guy. But uh, yeah, clear victory. Only lost 77 people. That's pretty good. Not even 77 people, I guess. Battle statistics, no experience gain, that's fine. Look like uh, our equites did a brand of the work. The equites and our, our Roman general. Our general did really well. I guess that would be Amulius. Uh, I can't highlight his name, but yep. Alright, good one for the good guys. Alright, I don't think Tiberius is kind of a tyrannical leader. So, we could exterminate, but what would be the point? It says occupy. We've got our first settlement. And we'll chop that again. We'll chop that down to a low tax rate. First thing I'll do is I'll upgrade the roads there. And uh, that's going to go ahead and do it for episode one of this Broody Eye campaign. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I did. If uh, you'd like to keep up with this series along with the other videos I'm going to be producing, go ahead and hit that subscribe button that's below the video. Uh, and also I placed a link to my Twitch TV stream in the description. So if you want to follow along there, um, I stream pretty often. Mostly I play Shogun and Fall of the Samurai. So uh, no, this, uh, this campaign won't be spoiled there. There won't be any special privileges given either way, so don't worry about that. But uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video, and I uh, uh, hope you have a good one. Thanks.